speaking up and active, people active in their communities, that I'm not talking about a fringe minority or a silent majority, but the silenced majority, silenced by the mainstream media. The media today represents a minority elite. These all have to be challenged, and many people are doing it. It's Michael Franti here. This is Amy Goodman with Rochester. Rochester Indeed. Hi, Rochester Indie TV show. Here we are today talking about uh, Students for a Democratic Society. That's the topic today. We have Maggie Spelina, who is a member of the local Rochester mm -hmm. chapter of SDS, and Ryan Akoff, who is with the, he's a member of the University of Rochester chapter of Students for a Democratic Society. So people, I mean, most people out there probably know Students for a Democratic Society, at least historically. Mm -hmm. Let's not maybe make that assumption, let's just describe what it is. Ryan, maybe you could talk about that. What is Students for a Democratic Society? It was around in the 60s and then it wasn't and now it's re-emerged. Let's start there. Yeah, so SDS was originally founded in 1960 um, as a student movement and it was probably the biggest student movement in the 60s and for, sort of at the forefront of the student protests, especially against the war, but on all types of issues. So, and then it came apart in 1970, it was 1971 a lot of factionalism within the group. In six, it was refounded. Um, and basically, um, SDS tries to instill the idea of sort of participatory democracy and the idea that um, influence can be, it comes directly from people. And, um, and that so democracy is not really a spectator sport, you know, where you um, just vote, you know, but it's the power is always with the people and they can take direct action. So taking on the war and then through the war, they they raised up um, the Vietnam War then, then raising all sorts of issues about um, gender, class, race, and, um, and trying to tie those together. The Rochester chapter of SDS has students from several local community colleges and high school students because I think that the, I don't think that there's anyone that's excluded as long as you're a student. And we have members who come to our meetings who are older. There's a man named David Dornford who comes and stays for our meetings and he has input. He can participate. He was a student. He understands these systems and all of these issues. I don't think that anyone would be excluded. No one has been thus far in our organizing in Rochester. Um, and it hasn't just been college students. And what are some of the issues you're working on right now? Is there particular um, um, In issue. Rochester, we are trying to focus right now on counter-recruitment issues. Um, that's something that affects for our specific chapter, high school students especially, and community college students who are often preyed upon due to their economic circumstances. Um, and we are working on a festival, a community integration festival, to have a DIY festival where we're going to have any media is going to come and do a presentation on being the media. We're going to have sewing and knitting, um, urban sustainability, and like, it's, it's so wonderful. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> there's going to be. You can check the Indie Media website for that. Yeah. We'll have it on the calendar. There's going to be a sewing and knitting workshop, and the understanding that community organization and having good relationships and good working skills with other people is the first foundation to building any movement. So it's, there's a lot of different goals. U of R is working on a couple different things too. Issues such as combating domestic violence, um, um, is a get to know your community campaign, sort of isolated campus from the city and people say what's on the other side of the, you know, don't even know what's the other side of the river. Type. But the one we've so far executed the most action and energy into has been University of Rochester. Um, making peace not war campaigns so specifically um, educating people on the war but then also with the complicity of the University of Rochester and so different ways that they are been involved and supported the war um, um, and then one action we've taken so far was uh, we had a sit-in um, at the Career Center when um, Lockheed Martin was interviewing on campus um, so just one way the University supports the wars by um, sponsoring interviews from Defense contractors, Lockheed Martin, is the largest uh, maker of weapons in human history and, and exporter. 
Um, so that was a successful event for us. Um, we had about you know, 35, 40 people, you know, and organized in four days, threw it together, and it was, um, it was a lot of fun. Bow to your remote control, information overload. Aren't you nice and comfortable? Isn't life so wonderful? The Democrats are part of the same agenda that the Republicans have. Lights. Camera in action, prepare your hands to be bashed in. Mobile broadcast news. So what's in? Rocks. It's a noise maker. Right. It's a rock right. Like pebbles. Okay. But you take the rocks out of there, what do you have? Pebbles. Or pebbles. Same thing you can yeah, Can I open this? You can, yeah, you can. The blue one's open. I mean, there's supposed to be like a musical procession right now, and we're just here to be a part of it. You just have like Moroccan. Because we're cheap. Landscaping stones. Gravel. You want them? I think we definitely accomplished demonstrating to the people of Denver that this is Police State Denver and that this is what they are doing with their tax dollars because at the other end, the other intersection on the other end of this whole crazy blockade thing that just happened, uh, the police there, basically two or three battalions of riot police that were keeping, you know, maybe ten protesters and a couple hundred regular Denver citizens from going anywhere. The citizens were talking all around me saying, what the fuck is going on? What happened here? I told them, you know, what happened down the street and they were like, well, why are we being kept from going where we're going? And people that before might not have been pissed off, we're getting pissed off because the police state was being applied to them as equally as it was being applied to us. So I think we accomplished that and we probably also accomplished uh, getting a lot of our eyes out to the world which should uh, help this grow in the next couple days throughout the week and in St. Paul as well. We had this funk of the war um, dance party in the streets, essentially. You know, just like a big, kind of a big block party to say that we can have free speech in any street we want instead of just on certain streets permitted by the police, essentially. And uh, the cops didn't like it, but they never actually told us to get off the streets, so we stayed in the streets. And then they put uh, out some weapons and cornered us, you know. But I guess once they finally said to get off the streets, he and I just got off the street. You know, we weren't trying to be too provocative here or anything. Yeah, the first few times they kind of cornered us, they never said disperse. You know, I mean. We had those yelling matches, which I kind of abstained from, I just kind of held back, you know, there's the yelling matches, and then they opened up and let us go somewhere, so we just kind of kept going where we were allowed to go until they finally actually full on cornered us, you know? Rochester Indie TV, and we're talking with uh, Maggie and Ryan, members of the kind of emerging Students for a Democratic Society movement that's happening nationally and locally at the University of Rochester. Ryan's been organizing and participating in a lot of actions, and Maggie throughout the Rochester community. Um, I kind of want to, I, the history of SDS is interesting to me, yeah. and you were talking about, I don't know how much you want to talk about this. I know there's a lot of things happening now, currently, and locally. Just a little bit more um, historically. Uh, as far as the influence that you think now, going back, that the SDS movement and the yeah. youth movement had to really stop the war and the anti-war movement during the anti, you know, Vietnam War movement, compared to now what we're seeing, that the youth involvement. How do you look at that and put an analysis on that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think the SDS and the student movement in general just had a general liberating effect, sort of opening up society and and just a different relationship to authority, you know, where, you know, before, students never did that. There were social movements in the United States, but it was never students. Um, and that's not what they're supposed to do. And so very much, um, just at least reading about different things, people questioning things for the first time and, and getting to question almost everything. So in general, I think it's really opened up the way for all of us today, where it's, it's, it's much 
easier and a much more open society in that sense. Um, and specifically with the war, um, yeah, I mean, it seems like it had a, a great influence where um, it, the protests became very visible because they get so big and they're very visible and shown in the media. Um, and and this and so this was always at the door for um, you know for Lyndon Johnson at the time. Is it was very clear that there was a lot of dissent. Um, and and you know eventually you know when things at the moment when things at least looked like they weren't going well, right? He you know he st you know he stepped down from president. He wasn't going to run again. And it sort of it was a clear sort of counterforce the whole way. So it seems like it was influential and in sort of. Um, People were not cheering it on, and whenever there was something Tet Offensive, whenever something negative happened, the whole climate turned against it. And now, what are some of the, you know, moments throughout this five-year war that's been going on, where students have really come forward and are resisting and standing up? And now, within SDS, how are you seeing these actions? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly the biggest. Um, the biggest protests were, you know, the February 15th before the war, um, and then um, when the war started, March. So that was before SDS itself was founded. Um, but I think, you know, the students were active, and this is one of the things that um, I think SDS is built off that. So students, you know, found, started to find their voice again, and then people said, well, let's try to organize a national organization, you know, that's multi-issue. Um, so I think that influenced SDS coming into being, and then since SDS has come into being, so. Um, yeah, so around the country there's been, you know, different chapters, people have done a lot of different things um, against the war. Um, what, would the num what would you estimate the numbers to be in the chapters right now? How it's, it's something about 120, 140. So it's, 140 it's chapters? Yeah, it's pretty vast. Um, so. is, that, is it international as well right now, or is it just a national? I think right now it's national. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah. And Maggie, will you talk about how Rochester first, because first Rochester had a chapter and now University of Rochester, and it sounds like there's movement to get a chapter at uh, MCC and other colleges in the area. Well, maybe. There's a chapter at FLCC also. Oh, and they, a chapter. But they, meet, they have their own separate meetings and they also meet in Rochester. I was working for a labor union. Um, that was the other reason that I was on the show was the protest and the boycott of the Rochester Plaza Hotel over the owner's refusal to allow a fair process for Which the Which we need an update show union. about that because there's some interesting things. Yeah, we'll talk about that There's definitely. a lot going on in Rochester as far as labor issues. And I wanted a way to reach out to fellow students about labor issues that were happening in Rochester. But when I spoke to other students at MCC, I realized that for as much as labor issues were something that deserve our attention, there are a lot of issues. And we're coming to a point as global capitalism becomes more global where you can't just look at labor and you can't just look at gender and you can't just look at race and you can't just look at class. You have to be able to take a look at these things as an intertwined web of issues. And SDS was an organizational structure that fit that ideal perfectly. They're a multi-issue group. And they recognize that all of these issues, the structures that reinforce these issues are all interconnected. And so we have to view them and organize around them in a way that recognizes that. And we started meeting in Rochester and some students from U of R came and they very quickly formed their own chapter. Um, the FLCC chapter formed before the Rochester chapter. And we tried to form a chapter of SDS at MCC. Um, and we had a lot of issues with the administration because mm -hmm. SDS is non-hierarchical, meaning that there aren't, in any given chapter, there's no person, there's no president and vice president. Whether you're a university chapter or a city chapter, um, there's no, there, everything is reached by consensus. We don't operate, well, do you guys operate by consensus? Mm -hmm. Everything, you know, operates by consensus unless a group decided not to go that way, but I don't think many have. And that made MCC very uncomfortable. Their traditional club structure is that they want contact people, they want a president and a vice president, they expect votes to become majority rules. So we became discouraged trying to organize at MCC specifically and decided to form a chapter within the city. Um, our goal is to continue to work with the administration of MCC and to go back and show them that we can do it in a way that's fair and directly democratic and consensus based and that it works. We feel like if we can organize and be doing it, then it's much more difficult for them to tell us that it won't work. So they want to see results before they'll prove it? I don't or? know that they want to see results. We, we became frustrated with their attitude towards our suggestions and we felt as though 
Let's just do it. Mm -hmm. Let's not continue to wait and work around these people's demands. Let's do it and then let's talk to them when we've done it. And just so we don't forget, just plug the times when you guys have your meetings oh, and where. Um, Rochester meets at the anti-war storefront on Monroe Avenue on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. every Wednesday. And your SDS meets on every Thursday um, when school's in session um, at 9 o'clock at Ruth Merrill Center, basement of Wilson Commons. How would you characterize the political makeup of the members? Is it very diverse? I mean, is it very anti-authoritarian? Is it more on the very left, like uh, socialist, anarchist, democratic socialist? How are people labeling? Are people are anti-labels? Or how, how is this coming about, the political identification? Most of the people who are involved in our chapter, and this isn't to say that, that, that this is something that is exclusionary, it just is the way that the makeup has tended to be so far, is people who identify really as radicals, as either anarchists or libertarian socialists or, you know, people who really are anti-capitalist and who believe that a lot of these problems are as the result of capitalism. But that's our group so far. and. New input is always a good thing. So it's really varying. It's very left group. It's a, the original constitution of SDS begins with the sentence, SDS is a group of students on the left. It's, it's not trying to integrate liberal and conservative. Wow, it's so interesting. Time's just flying here. We're going to come back and talk uh, more about Students for Democratic Society with Maggie and Ryan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dawn with Rochester Indie TV, and I've forgotten the website, but now I'm here to remind you, rochester.indymedia.org. We're here with Maggie and Ryan, and we're talking about Students for Democratic Society. So how, what was the energy like when Obama won? How did you feel that the students' response and the members of SDS are feeling? Is it, you know, ratcheted down? Is it ratcheting up? Was, are people hopeful? What are you gauging out there right now? I'll start with Maggie, and I'd like you to answer that too, Ryan. Um, I think that 
we come from a generation, especially because our chapter has a lot of really young people, you know, of real disenchantment. And I think that it, everyone was excited, but it was excitement tempered with a lot of skepticism um, that no matter who won, that the person that won would be able as one individual to really reflect the changes that we feel we want to see in our culture. Um, Everyone was excited when Obama won. I don't think there was anybody that didn't want Obama to win in, in our chapter. But I think that we feel as though it isn't realistic to expect one person, no matter how powerful they are and how intelligent, to be able to change these big institutional problems that we see. It was really inspiring to see that people could mobilize on the level that they did. And I think that I'm hopeful that people will be able to roll over that enthusiasm that they placed into getting Obama elected to realize that he's not going to be able to facilitate any of the changes that we'd like to see without input and support. And that everyone has to stay active if we want to see these improvements made. Ryan, do you want to comment on that? Yeah, no, I think um, <coughs> there's just so much excitement from students and you know, just the student population in general across the country just overwhelmingly for Obama. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it was just, for me, it was just exciting to see other people so excited about politics for the first time. Um, I've never seen that much excitement and participation. And, um, and we definitely want to feed off that, um, his energy that he's created and um, in converting this into specific things because his, his model of sort of change, you know, really holding him to it and, and giving it substance. Because um, when I talk to a lot of people about Obama's policies, a lot of them are concerned, even people supporters, they're concerned about a number of his policies. Um, but they say, well, it's just because of the campaign rhetoric, you know, that he wants to escalate in Afghanistan, um, you know, um, he wants to subsidize clean coal, um, these types of things. Um, so our job will be, and this is one of the campaigns for the National SDS, is sort of the 100 days campaign, um, as he is coming in ready to, ready to go, and hopefully there can be a, a strong mass movement from, from everybody, but the students and students in democratic society really, um, think, really speaking, getting his ear, like, we were the people who elected you, can you represent us? You know, mm -hmm. can you make sure that you don't <laughs> fall into this hole um, and really these first 100 days um, really you know, get on the right track? Do you know of any actions planned for the inauguration SDS is planning this time? Um, we, our chapter hasn't planned an action. Yeah, we're not doing anything specific for the inauguration. So what is, I mean, how do you see the future of SDS? It's weird, it only lasted about 10 years in the 60s. Is this gonna be something, it's gonna gain momentum and continue on for a while? Or what do you, what do you see, where is it gonna head? Both of our chapters are under three months old. And we've already seen from one that started, another start, and U of R has hit the ground running in an incredibly admirable and organized way. And it's really inspiring to the Rochester chapter because we don't have, because we're not affiliated with a university, we're trying different things. It's, different, it's a different organizing structure when you're working within a college, I think, than when you're not. And I am incredibly inspired to see that there was a chapter at FLCC a Rochester chapter, now there's U of R chapter. Hopefully people will see this. You can always come to our meetings and find out how to organize chapters at your own schools. Um, you know, our members that are in high schools, I'm sure will bring these ideas back to their high schools and to their colleges when they go to college. And I think that the, the future is incredibly bright for student organizing and for conscientious students. Yeah, and, and um, similarly, I, f I feel like there's a really, we have a lot of opportunities and we're, we're sort of at the cusp of a moment where we're really going to be dramatic changes and the, and the question is are how positive or how negative will they be? So hopefully, um, you know, we'll be a strong part of that. So far, we've, we're planning a, a teaching at the University of Rochester February 4th um, on War and Peace, so educating people about the war. I mean, we're, over Christmas, we'll be, um, Christmas break, we'll be organizing a lot of um, different um, campaigns to, for specific actions, um, but yeah, I mean, I think this is this is exactly what we need is a is a strong student movement. Um, just as we speak right now, as students have risen up in Greece, and you know, second week of their standoff as they're trying, as here's a case where they're actually um, on the verge of possibly changing their society, and things are going to continue to get worse. Um, and as in the United States and financially and across the world, and I think that's when people's minds start to open up for different possibilities as, 
as um, the capital, as we know, certainly has collapsed. So I'm glad you mentioned Greece because it's so intense and radical. I mean, it's unbelievable. banks being burned all of Europe joining in, the strongholds, the barricades at the universities. It's really intense. And to me, it seems like maybe there wasn't, and it's hard to say as an outsider, not having really been there to see how it's organizing, but there isn't the organizational structure as much in place. So to me right now, it seems like SDS getting people thinking and the discussions that are happening, and there's actions as well, but just the planning to figure out that we can participate democratically to figure out what happens as soon as that starts coming down, right. which is just a matter of time. Right. So those are, that is really exciting yeah. to see. And uh, any last comments as far as messages to the youth out there watching, youth viewers who, uh, for whatever reason, don't want to get involved, don't have the time, oh, it's hard, it's this or that, or just other things that you want to let people know? Somebody said something at one of our meetings that absolutely changed my life. You know, he said, I sometimes get really frustrated that there aren't more people at these meetings. And then I think about the amount of resources that are invested in keeping young people apathetic. And I realize how powerful we must be if such money-motivated people will spend so much of their money keeping us from thinking about these things. And it's easy. You just turn off your computer and you go to a meeting and you realize that there are so many people who care about these issues. And it's fun. It's fun to make positive changes in your world and to meet other people and form meaningful relationships with other people who care to see the world a better place than the way that they found it. And it's incredible. Come. It's Wednesdays. So don't go seven. to MySpace, don't go to the mall, go to a <laughs> meeting. And when is it again? Wednesdays at 7 at the anti-war storefront on Monroe Avenue. In Ryan? Right? And Thursdays at 9 p.m. at um, Ruth Merrill Center at Wilson Commons. And any last things you want to get out? About 30 seconds. Um, I mean, I second everything um, um, Maggie said. But yeah, I mean, f for me, the biggest thing is working on things are important, but working with a group and having fun. And, and, this, is, and this is a great way to um, have fun, you know, not necessarily, but any, any, you know, social justice, peace sort of organizations. Um, um, it, this is a great way to make friends and build community. And we know young people are the future. Yeah. So, and now my daughter's 14 going to SDS meetings and I She's couldn't be so much more proud. She'll, you know, <laughs> she, you know, try to radicalize me more and more throughout her life. And so I'm so grateful for her and it is friendly SDS to students and with all of you members too. and organizers. So thank you. Yes, yeah. it is friendly to children and their parents. So um, thank you, Maggie and Ryan thank and you. SDS. And you've been watching Rochester AD Media's Indie TV. Check us out online, rochesterindymedia.org.